Hey there, science friends. It's Dr. Kate Bieberdorf, aka Kate the Chemist, busting into the Seeking a Scientist feed because there is some news I have to share with y'all. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2023 Nobel Prize in Chemistry in equal shares to... The 2023 Nobel Nobel Prize in Chemistry was just announced, and I am ecstatic about it. For the discovery and synthesis of quantum dots. So often, this award is given to scientists outside of the chemistry field, which, if I'm honest, as a chemist, can be a little frustrating at times. But this year, the committee got it right when they selected Mwanji Bavendi, a chemistry professor at MIT, Louis Bruce, a chemistry professor at Columbia, and Alexei Yekimov, a physicist that works on chemistry at the Nanocrystals Technology, Inc. What was your first action on hearing that you'd been awarded? Oh, well, I wasn't sure if it was true, and I was trying to wake up. Yeah, it's quite an honor and quite a surprise. Ever since this announcement, my phone has been ringing off the hook with people who want me to explain just what the heck are quantum dots. How do they impact my life, your life, and how do quantum dots relate to nanotechnology? The real big applications are still in the future. So quantum dots can be seen as one milestone for the whole field of nanotechnology, which is really about using new properties that happen at these new scales. So I thought I'd just pop in here real quick and break the big news down for y'all too, because this discovery, it's a big deal. Quantum dots are the reason why your TV has rich, beautiful colors and why there are lamps that can mimic natural sunlight that save you and me from seasonal depression. It's also the reason why solar panels are hyped up as the next big thing for renewable energy and why we're able to target tumors with more accuracy. Basically, these babies are stars and they're finally getting their moment in the sun. This year's Nobel Prize was awarded for the discovery and synthesis of quantum dots. So how did that all happen? Well, back in 1980, Alexei Yekimov, one of the winners of this year's Nobel Prize, synthesized the first ever quantum dot, but he didn't really know what it was. Then a few years later, Louis Bruce, one of the other winners, figured out how to make a similar material, but in the liquid form. Fast forward to 1993, when Wanji Bavendi, the third winner, produced the first quantum dot that was considered to be, quote, high quality. And y'all, that was 30 years ago. You might be wondering, why are these guys getting all this attention now in 2023? Why did it take so long? And what could that mean for the future of all this? Well, that's just how the Nobel Prizes work in chemistry. They are given out decades later because their research was so important and impactful. In this case, these three scientists essentially were creating a whole brand new field in chemistry. So what are these little dots? In essence, quantum dots are a small cluster of atoms often referred to as nanocrystals or nanoparticles. They are tiny, about one ten thousandth the size of a human hair. You'll often find cadmium, indium, zinc, and selenium in these small materials, but other atoms can sneak in there too. But here's what's cool about them. Regular old molecules absorb energy and then their electrons climb up to higher energy levels. Picture an electron just running up a set of stairs. Eventually, the electron gets bored up there and will fall down the stairs. When this happens, it releases energy in the form of light at a very specific wavelength, like a particular shade of orange or green. This is unique to each molecule and no matter what we do, we cannot change that color. But with quantum dots, all we have to do is change the size of the material and we can miraculously change the color. So for example, if you have a very small quantum dot, like two nanometers, it will absorb energy and then emit the color blue. But then if we add a layer of atoms on top of it and increase the size to say six nanometers, the quantum dot will now emit the color red, all because we changed the size of the material. This is extraordinary because we've never been able to do this before. That's why this discovery by our newest Nobel laureates is considered to be the foundation of nanotechnology. This new field, nanotechnology, is exactly what it sounds like, the development of technology that is too small for the human eye to see. And what's spooky about all this is that even though we can't see it, 
quantum dots are what's making our world sparkle. I mean, right now, a surgeon can be using them to make tumors glow, which makes tumor removal much, much easier. At the same time, engineers are developing new technology for electronics, and by using quantum dots, they can make our materials flexible, opposed to the rigid computers and laptops we're currently using. The same idea is being used by environmental scientists who are fighting to make thinner solar panels, which will effectively increase efficiency. So, because of quantum dots, for the first time, we are able to control the movement of electrons on the nanoscale. Imagine being able to control the movement of something that is one ten thousandth the size of a human hair. It sounds like an impossible task, doesn't it? And for those of you that listened to our episode on multiverses, you may already be thinking that this has to do with wave-particle duality. And you're right. Really small particles, like electrons, can act like waves, so when we change the size of the nanoparticle, the electron's wavelength gets, for lack of better words, smushed. And that change causes the quantum dot to emit a different color of light. My hope is that with quantum dots and the people studying them finally getting the overdue spotlight, we can get more funding, lean into the development of new technology, and hopefully rekindle the interest in solar panels for renewable energy. The ripple effect of these types of awards on the greater science community is no small thing. Those of us who have dedicated our lives to better understanding this complicated world and shaping a better future are absolutely buzzing with excitement over this award. Just speaking from personal experience, my entire PhD work was inspired by the 2010 Nobel Prize for Suzuki coupling. I spent years trying to develop catalysts for this particular reaction, and it's all because my boss was inspired by the Nobel Prize. Can you imagine what's happening today in the laboratories across the country, across the world? What ideas are they coming up with? What new discoveries will be inspired by this prize? All right, y'all, that's it for now. Remember, we're in the midst of planning season two, so let us know what you want to know and what questions you want answered. I can already tell you one of the episodes in the works came from a listener who emailed me their question, so send us yours. Leave a review or email me at kate at seekingascientist.org. I cannot wait to hear what you have to say and what you're curious about. This show is produced by Suzanne Hogan with editing by Mackenzie Martin. Special thanks, as always, to the team at KCR Studios, Anna Schmidt, Jean-Vive Desmarteau, Byron Love, and the Stowers Institute. You heard clips from NBC and the Nobel Prize with music by the Coma Calling and Blue Dot Sessions. For more updates on the upcoming season, follow us on Instagram at SeekingSIPod or me personally at Kate the Chemist. Stay nerdy, my friends! <laughs>